Hey YouTube, this is Terrell and I'm back with another video. If this is your first time watching, I want to say welcome to the journey. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Today's video is going to be a fun and exciting and celebratory video as I discuss my journey to becoming a homeowner at the age of 25. August 6th of 2020, right in the middle of a pandemic, I closed on my home. Um, here we are one year later, so I survived one year of being a homeowner. Um, so again, this video is going to be educational and provide more insight and more in-depth um, knowledge of my experience of becoming a homeowner. So again, if you like what you see, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos and stay tuned for more. All right. Before I begin to start this video and offer my tips and suggestions and um, my experience of becoming a homeowner, I have to discuss the why. The why is the why. I wanted to become a homeowner. So I think the biggest reason as to why I decided to purchase a home, you know, besides the fact that, you know, the mortgage industry was, was seeing low interest rates among mortgages, um, my biggest why was longevity. You know, long run, you know, this is a big investment that can turn into, um, you know, assets for me, you know, where I'm able to, you know, build equity and be able to have something that I can call mine so I have to worry about you know, reporting to a landlord or worrying about neighbors. If I live in an apartment, there's nothing wrong with living in an apartment or, you know, reporting to a landlord that works best for you. But for me, it was the longevity that being a homeowner creates for you as an individual. Um, that was my biggest why. Then also growing up for me, you know, we always rented. We didn't, my, my mom didn't, wasn't, it wasn't a homeowner, right? She didn't purchase a home. So being able to say that I was able to purchase a home due to taking care of my credit and my finances was a big accomplishment for me. So um, to stay all of that, um, the road was not easy, but we got here. We made it. It was one year later and I'm in my home. I'm enjoying it. And I'm learning a lot about this home ownership thing, but we're here. So the first step I would say if you're interested in purchase a home, the first step you want to do is to get a pre-approval. So, of course, you would go to your bank, your credit union, um, to see how much house can you afford. So, the pre-approval, of course, you you know sit down with a loan officer, and you know you provide the documents that they require. Was typically like your pay stubs, um, tax returns, W twos. Um, like I said, if you have an account with them, they probably look at your account history. See how much money that you have or you know available funds or assets and um, of course you're gonna get your credit all right that will let them know or that will let you know how much house you can afford and what you're able to purchase so of course if you get a pre-approval of one hundred and ten thousand um, dollars unless you got the money in down payment you know you're not gonna look at a house that's three hundred thousand dollars unless you got the big size of a down payment. So the pre-approval is a great opportunity for you and the realtor to know this is how much house you can afford and these are the houses or options you should be looking at. So that would be the first step. You want to get a pre-approval um, and from there, you would then begin to locate a realtor. So for me, in my experience, if I back up a little bit, I first originally started the process for home ownership um, back in 2019. So back in 2019, we had, I believe it was Wells Fargo had came and did a big like three day weekend um, at the convention center in my city when they were looking for first time home buyers to offer a down payment assistance um, through their, their organization, through their company. So they were offering like $18,000 in down payment assistance along with, of course, a mortgage. So of course I had to provide all those documents. I went for a loan officer and they told me that, uh, <laughs> you can't buy a house at this time. And so what they did was they redirected me to a um, housing counseling agency in my city, uh, which was the housing partnership. And so from there, I connected with them. Um, they're a certified housing counseling agency that pretty much uh, works with uh, inspiring or future homeowners to get them house ready, to educate them, to provide counseling, whether they build your finances, budgeting, your credit, they do it all. And so I signed up with them and that pretty much got the process started from there. And I did like five workshops, which are very informative. Um, in your city, look up any housing counseling agencies that may be available. Um, 
They're very informative. It was a one-time fee, uh, I think $35 for registration. And that pretty much covered your, um, your credit report. Because in that workshop, they taught us how to view um, your credit reports and completely, and also how to monitor your credit as well, which is very informative and it helps me now to this day, even with me being in the home. I still utilize those uh, skills and techniques that I learned in that workshop. But it was from there where they actually pointed me in the direction. Oh, let me start right there. I met with my house and um, counselor. She reviewed my credit. My credit wasn't that bad. I probably was like a few points off for probably being able to be approved. And of course, every bank, uh, that's what's important that you do your research. Every bank has certain requirements for credit. Um, as you know, also certain loans as well. You know, you have your FHA loan, you have your conventional loan, you have USTA, you have various loan types, and they may require their own um, credit score requirement. Typically, I believe if you do FHA, you can get a loan with a 595 credit score, but you have to have three and a half percent down for a first time home buyer, typically. Don't quote me. But um for me, at the, at the time, my credit score was a 612. <laughs> and typically, they want to say, you know, you want to aim for 620 or higher so that we can get a good interest rate. So I had a 612, but I didn't stop there. I, I continued working on my credit. I continued to save. Built my house in council, and she was like, you know what? If you feel like your credit has improved since um, that day of the convention, where Wells Fargo was there, I'll put your credit right down to see it. So she put my credit. It had went up to like a 620, maybe 619, I don't think it was. She said, you know what? I have a lender in mind that, you know, we partner with, we work with. I'm going to send it over to him and see what he can do. And it was from there that I connected with my lender. He was able to get me a pre-approval. And he connected me for real today. He knew. And I originally started looking for houses then. But I'm not going to go into too much detail about what happened. I'm going to do a separate video for that. Um, on the power of waiting and the power of, you know, letting go and walk away from things. So fast forward to May of 2020. Um, I had just graduated grad school. Um, I got a job offer, a full-time job offer. So I decided to leave my job where I was, I think about two years or so. And I was like, you know what? I'm about to buy a house. Here we are in this pandemic. Mortgage rates are low. Let me see what I can do. So I called up that lender that I connected with back in 2019. I got the first pre-approval from, as well as that realtor. And I was like, hey, um, I'm about to graduate grad school. I got a new job offer. I'm making more money. Like, what can you do? So interested enough, you can use your job offer as proof of your income when you know applying for a home loan. So if you're someone that's you know looking to buy a home, but you're looking to switch jobs. As long as, from my understanding, as long as in the same industry, you can still provide an offer letter versus having to provide X amount of pay stubs. So I provided pay stubs for my current job at the top, as well as the offer letter to say, hey, I'm going to be switching jobs in the same industry. Here's my new offer letter with the new amount I'm going to be making. So he was able to use that and give me a new pre-approval within a couple of weeks or so. And from there, the realtor was like, okay, let's hit the ground running to find these houses because again, it's 2020 pandemic, everyone trying to buy a house. So at this point, it's a seller's market. People are overbidding uh, of the asking price. So you gotta be really competitive and ready to like put an offer in right then and there. So that was May of 2020. We went out looking for a home after I got my pre-approval. Um, I did sign the, I'm not sure what it's called, but the agreement with the realtor. Um, and we began looking for homes. So from there, once you find the home that you like, you'll typically, the realtor will put an offer in. Um, along with that offer, you have to put in your, um, what you're willing to pay for the earnest deposit, and then what you're willing to pay for your due diligence. So, earnest deposit, that's basically saying, this is how serious he is, he or she is about purchasing his home. Um, that's typically anywhere from $500 to probably $2,000 if you really want to show that you're serious to purchase a home with the sellers. And then the due diligence is what the sellers receive for taking the house off the market. So that's anywhere from that same pretty much price range. But my realtor, because she had experience, she knew what she was doing. She was like, 
you're not paying that much in due diligence. So for me, I put a thousand dollars in earnest deposit and three hundred dollars in due diligence. So literally, y'all, I found the house that I like. I put an offer on, got in a bit more. I was like, okay, so we gotta get competitive. We gotta, you know, make my offer stand out. So make a long story short, I eventually lost out on the uh, bidding war, but this is how God works. Came back around, the seller was like, hey, is your um, buyer still interested? This is our counter offer. So they counter offered, and my realtor again, she was like, you are not paying that much money in due diligence unless you want to get the house. Now, I did want to offer a suggestion. Um, of course, you want to make your offer stand out, but depending on your, your loan type, you might want to reconsider that. Um, I even went with the FHA loan. So with FHA loan, of course, that's um, HUD, you know, which is the House and Urban Development, government-funded, government-backed. They're not going to... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to close it at home if it doesn't appraise at what it's asking. So that basically states if the the seller's asking for 180, but I've spent or I, I offer to buy at 200,000, but the, the the appraisal says 190, I cannot close on it at home. That's how I'm the difference of that 190 to 200,000, which that's $10,000, right? So she was like, you got to be careful. We're trying to overbid because if it doesn't praise, you can't close it at home unless you have the difference to make up, you know, that difference. So I put my offer in. The sellers was like, okay, this is what we want to do. Just, this is, you know, they wanted like $750 in due diligence, which again goes to their pocket. And I'm like, no, I'm sticking with my $300. My max like $500, I think, at the time. So they walked away. My realtor was very encouraging, very motivated. So it's very important that you get a good realtor that's going to work for you. And most of all, know what they're doing. She was like, you know what? Don't be discouraged. There's more houses out there. So we hit the ground running again, again, the sales market. It'll be time we'll pull up to the house and someone to put an offer in already. <laughs> so we got to go to the next house. So um, I literally, on a Thursday, went out to get houses and I went to be in my house. So at that time, I was living in an apartment and um, literally the house that I'm in now was literally around the corner. And I looked it up, I was like, you know what? I've seen that street before. So I looked it up on Google Maps and it was literally five minutes away from my apartment. So I met her there. I literally fell in love. Um, it's a single family home, existing home. I think it was built in 2004. So it was what, 16 years old or so at the time. But the sellers completely, and when I say completely, they completely renovated the home from top to bottom, new roof, new flooring. Um, it was a new uh, water heater, new toilets. They had the luxury vinyl planks flooring throughout, new cabinets in the bathrooms, in the kitchens, um, a new HVAC with a warranty. They literally renovated the house from front to back, top to bottom. And it's set on a pretty piece of, um, of a big lot, about 0.26 acres. That's a lot size. So it was really a good deal, good pricing. That was Thursday. I was like, you know what? I want to buy this house. I wrote to went back, looked at the comps around the you know the community. And I was like, okay, I think what you're offering is a pretty good, you know, um, a good offer. Put the offer in. Y'all, that was Thursday. By Saturday, I got a text saying, there's up the offer. Nobody but God, I swear, nobody but God. I didn't go through no bidding war, no counter offer, then it them my offer. And it was from there, of course, you notify your lender um, that when it can begin the process of going through underwriting. That's where the pain comes in at, <laughs> right? So, of course, you know, you go through, like I said, a pre approval. From there, you know, you get a realtor. You lock in an agreement with your realtor to work with them. Um, again, which is why it's very important that you research your realtor to, you know, see a number of houses that they have sold, to see what they're able to offer you and if they're willing to work for you. But they're working for you at the end of the day. And then three, they, like I say, you go out to buy houses. And then from there, once you get um, under contract, um, of course, you sign all these documents. They give you a, a million documents you'll begin to sign in your um, of course, electronically, the DocuSign, what we did, um, you begin that process of underwriting. 
that was May. Of, or that was June. No, it was May. It was actually June. June of 2020. Literally, that's when the process and headache began. So underwriting, that's what the process of the mortgage company is going to begin to um, pretty much really uh, dig deep into your bank statements, look at your credit report. And during that time, it's very important that you're not making no large purchases. You're not um, opening up new lines of credit. You ain't doing nothing but really pretty much saving. You got to be careful with that, too, how much money you you know, you know put into your bank account. And they may ask and question, like, where does money come from? So doing the underwriting process, like I said, they're going to rip it into shreds. Like They're going to look at everything. So it's very careful that you pretty much, as they say, move in silence. You move in silence on that time. But also during that time, for me, I used actually down payment um, assistance to my city. And I think it was like $7,500 in down payment assistance plus eight thousand dollars from the state so with the assistance from the city that i stay in we had to get an inspection which is a good thing in my state north carolina you don't have to get an inspection but because i use down payment assistance they sent their own inspectors out to make sure it's house ready which is a good thing to ask an extra layer of protection for you and of course the bank as well also during that process you get the appraisal um from the bank to say, make sure the house is worth um, what you that what you offered or what you you know go under contract for, so did all that. The first time for my inspection, I failed. It it, it failed, not I failed. Um, I think it was a few things they wanted to be repaired or up to standard, up to code, and the sellers agreed to fix those things, and it passed second time. So it was on our way again in that time frame of underwriting. I also had to. Um, reach out to insurance companies to get a quote for homeowners insurance and had to submit you know, necessary documents for that. So here we are at this point in time, like in July. So I'm like, okay, I had done everything, respond to every email, literally. My lender sent an email saying, hey, I need this. Send it right over. <laughs> of course, we're in a pandemic. So of course, this, you know, everything's pretty much electronic at this point. Um, Typically, a lot of transactions and dealings with mortgage, I believe, is electronic at this point. You can use DocuSign to sign documents. But literally, it was like every other day, my lender was like, hey, I needed this. I'm like, I just sent you that. <laughs> Send them that. Two weeks later, hey, I didn't get that. I'm like, I just sent you that. I literally went back and forth and was like, okay, like, we're ready to close. I done everything. Underwriting at that time was pretty much going steady. They had the insurance information. I put the insurance company. They reached out to them to get verification. Like, we were pretty much at this point was waiting on them. Now, if you're using down payment assistance, please understand, which I did not know at the time until August when I, my lender eventually said, you know, what it was, which he could have said in the beginning, but he didn't. Um, with that payment assistance, they also go through underwriting as well. <laughs> so in addition to underwriting for the mortgage company, I had underwriting for the first down payment assistance from the city and then underwriting from the down payment assistance from the state. So that's three underwritings. So that's why it was like, I'm sending the same documents over and over again. But in my head, I'm like, well, my lender already got the documents. You should have a folder saved that you could just pull from that. But Again, it's a journey, you know, it's a road to something greater. So, hey, stick with the, the labor pain, stick with the punches, keep it moving. So here we are in July, end of July, and I'm like, okay, Rorta was like, what else is needed at this point? Underwriting is pretty much good to go. Your last step would be verification of employment. And reach out to your HR to make sure you, you know, you actually do work there still. Like, right, what's, what's the hold up? So at this point, my realtor, my lender was like, well... I, um, I'm waiting on the law office, which is doing the closing, you know, and the law office is like, well, no, we're waiting on you. So at this point, I'm fresh. Like, I'm like, I'm in the middle. Y'all going back and forth. What's going on? I'm ready to move. I'm packing up my apartment. Like, I'm not trying to pay no more rent. <laughs> really? <laughs> trying to hold off from, you know, paying rent in August. I'm like, what's the issue? So literally... I tell y'all, me and my lender got into it um, through email exchange, of course. And literally, I had to 
it, it was unprofessional on his behalf, you know, because I'm like, sir, like, I'm giving you everything you request, and you keep reaching back out for the same stuff. Plus, the law office saying they're waiting on you for certain something things, like, what's going on? So, literally, I had to get his supervisor involved, and moving forward, I would see the supervisor any time we corresponded through email. It was a big, big mess. My realtor was upset. She was like, I don't want to work with him ever again. <laughs> like it was, it was a mess. But anyway, that was in July. Like I said, I had pretty much met all past underwriting. Everything was done. We was waiting pretty much to close. So it was in July going to, and I had got a closing date, but the law office didn't have any openings because also during that time, of course, people was doing um, refinancing, which also had to go through closing for that as well. So the, cl the law office pretty much was booked. So I didn't get a closing date until the, I think my original closing date was August 4th. So August 4th came, I'm excited, I took off work. Like I'm at the law office waiting for them to open up. <laughs> I go ahead and sign these documents. You know, you can sign a huge, thick packet of documents that of course then has to be recorded, um, which is your deed and the, you know, all that stuff, which had to be recorded through this, you know, your city or your county. And um, with the records from, uh, well, I'm not sure what it's called, bottle records. And so I get there on, on August 4th and <laughs> she was like, okay, I'm going to um, submit it um, for, you know, for bottle records so, so that you record on the book as the homeowner for this home. Because it normally, you know, non-cover world, you can take it to the county office and they'll submit it that way and record it on the books. But because of COVID, you know, we right dead in the middle of COVID, um, a pandemic per se, they was doing electronically. Tell me why. <laughs> I get an email from the, uh, the um, actually she was a paralegal. She was a, a, notary, par a notary paralegal, which was able to also do closing documents. I thought you had to have a lawyer, but actually you don't. Um, she was like, it failed. I'm like, come on. I took off work for this. Like, I'm excited. I want to get my key. I want to move in. Like, come on now. I, I even had the lights transferred over. Like, we was ready to go. Like, I'm ready to move. It failed. I literally was just over at that point. Like I said, I had a few weeks prior, me and the lender got into it his unprofessional remarks, but there's nothing here or there. I'm still here. I made it. Um, I'm like, okay, Laura, what's trying to teach me? Trying to teach me patience, anything. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm here at this point. What's one more day? So then I'm like, well, can we get, the, you know, appointment for the next day? No, it'll probably have to be on the 6th. Okay. Six come by. Uh, I said, by this time, I had signed the documents at this point. She just had to record it. The six came and I got an email alert saying you are officially the home order of such and such address. Y'all, I was so excited. Like I literally, once I got the email and I was able to go and get the keys and actually the key was in the lock box at the house. The uh, sellers left from there, but the house was actually empty. I went to the house, got this key out the lock box, went inside and I was just like, I made it. So Again, um, like I said, I talked about patience, you know, that's going to be the biggest thing that you have to rely on when um, looking to purchase a home. It is not an easy process. You, you know, like I said, you deal with a lot of parties involved in that process. You know, you're dealing with your lender, you're dealing with um, insurance company, you're dealing with the seller, you're dealing with your realtor. Um, and then you're dealing with yourself and your, you, you know, your own anxiety, and your own fears and your own worries. And that can be um, stressful within itself is you know yourself, but then dealing with the extra layers. Like I said, for me, you know, I had lender, I had the realtor, you had the seller, you got um, I mean, well, underwriter would fall on the lender, but I'm saying underwriter, because that's part of the process as well. Then you have I use two down payment assistance programs, like you had all those parties involved plus self. And your self worries and fears and insecurities, that is definitely a lot. But what I will say to encourage you, 
keep up the process. Stay on the journey. You know, um, if you have this goal of mine, stick to it. And like I stated in the beginning of my story, I originally started this process November 2019. Here we are, 2021, and it has come to pass. Um, it's basically how they always say in church, um, how God may not come when you want it, but he's always on time. Literally, that was the experience that I experienced on my road to home ownership. And if I can do it at 25, whoever's watching this video, you can do it at whatever age you may be or whatever stage you are in life. Um, what I will say and encourage anyone who's looking to purchase a home, definitely do your research. Research your lender. Research the different available programs that are available. Um, there are programs available, you know, different, you know, your city, different states will have different um, incentives for being a first time home buyer. Look into those options that you have available to you. Um, again, research your realtor. Is your realtor aware of the different down payment assistance programs? Is your lender aware of those down payment assistance programs? Because typically with those programs, you as the um, buyer is, uh, is not applying for that. It's your lender that's typically applying for that and submit the necessary document. So make sure your lender is aware of those doc uh, those programs. Um, whatever bank that you go to, are they offering any incentives for purchase a home as a first time home buyer? Look at the different loan types. You have the FHA, you have the USDA, you have the conventional, you have the VA loans for our you know veterans out there. So definitely do your research. That's going to be key. Um, again, patience. I was so excited and ready to, you know, get this accomplished. My patience is good, grow thin, but if I learn anything, um, nothing come easy <laughs> in this world, in this life. And if it did, I think we all would be in a, such a better world, right? So I hope I was able to offer some good tips and good suggestions, um, for you who's watching this video. Um, if you have any questions or further questions, feel free to jot them down in the comments below. Um, if you purchased a home, tell me what your experience was. Um, again, I hope this video was very informative. Um, again, stay tuned for more videos. And if you have any suggestions for any future videos, please share them down below in the comments. Again, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Also, if you have any friends and family who um, will benefit from this video, Share this video with them. Share it in your social media handles. Um, share the love. We are growing. I think we have about 32 subscribers. Um, again, patience. Stay on the race. Stay on the journey. Um, we'll get there eventually. So, again, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy it. So before I close out this video, I wanted to show you all a quick snippet of my office and the project that I'm currently working on. Um, as you know, I'm a school social worker, so my passion is definitely serving youth and working with children. But in addition to me serving that capacity, I also serve in the capacity with my church uh, on the youth ministry. And we're going to be hosting a back to school drive. We're going to be giving that book back to the community and to the youth that's in our church. So currently in my office at home, it is a complete mess. Um, I've been wanting to do a tour of my home office for quite some time, but it's still a little work in progress. But I want to show you all what I'm working on, and I may do another video on me completing this project. And um, just doing a, a video time lapse of me working on stuff in these book bags. I have about 155 book bags to pack in. Got about half done. <laughs> so I just want to show you all what I'm working on right now. Please don't pass no judgment. Um, if you're interested in donating any contributions to um, my church's youth ministry, please let me know. And I'll be sure to send you the link of how you can donate and further instructions as well. So here is my office and my home office and what it looks like. Um, I do have a TV in here, which I got this stand. I need to really put some stuff on there, but um, like I said, it's a mess. I got school supplies, book bags. Um, I was able to purchase the book bags from Bags um, bags in bulk. Um, I got book bags literally everywhere. Um, like I said, school supplies. You got folders over there, crayons, markers. Um, these are the book bags that we're going to be giving out. It's like a 17-inch um, it's like different multiple colors 
we got some like red, blacks, and blues, and <sighs> my office is a mess. It's been like this now for about, about two weeks, and I literally have been just <laughs> being lazy. But again, like I said, if you want to donate, let me know, and I'll be sure to give you further instructions and give you the link on how you can donate to this cause. Um, again, hope you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for more.